Hello, here's a list showing the roles in a company and their salaries. To analyze it, I can insert a pivot table. Place an existing sheet right next to the data. Role goes to rows, salaries to values. By default, the data has been grouped and the aggregation used is sum. However, what I want is for the pivot table to display the group and subgroups without aggregating them. So how can this be done? An easy way is to add index numbers. So in this video, I'll show you how to add index numbers to grouped data with formulas and power query. If this sounds interesting, keep watching. Please subscribe if you haven't and don't forget to click the like button. Thank you. You can use the COUNTIF function to add index numbers to each group. The COUNTIF function counts the number of cells within a range that meets a condition. The formula has to be written in such a way that the range expands when you move to the next row. So watch this closely. COUNTIF. I'm counting the value in the first row, so the range is B3. Press colon so it references itself. Press F2 for edit mode and move to the first cell reference. Now press F4 to lock B3. This is a mixed cell reference. The first part is an absolute reference and the second part is a relative reference that will change when the formula is copied. The criteria is B3. That is whatever is in the cell. Copy down. And that's all. To verify our sort, right click sort a to z you can see the index number for each group now insert a pivot table roll an index number to rows salary to values now go to the design tab and change the layout to tabular you can remove subtotals too if you want to know the total per group, collapse the group. And if you want the details, expand. Depending on your data source and size, this method is super fast. And unlike Power Query, Excel is not case sensitive, so this grouping works well. Now let's see how this can be done in Power Query. Right click, get data from table or selection. I'll name the query index. The next step is to group the data. Right click and select group by. You can do this in the transform tab as well. Basic is fine. From the drop down, select the field to be grouped, and that's row. The new column name is group. The operation should be all rows. OK. Check it out, Power Query groups these roles separately because Power Query is case sensitive. So I'll delete the step and start over again. The first transformation for this data is to capitalize each word. Select the column, right click, transform and capitalize each word. We can now group the rows. In the transform tab, group by, group role name is group return all rows click ok great the next step is to add a custom column go to the add column tab custom column you can leave custom as the new column name doesn't matter the m function needed here is table dot add index number Type table and select from the suggestions. This formula will return the position of each value in the group. Now using the syntax, table is click to select. New column name is index in quotes. Initial value is one. Now others are optional, so close the bracket. No syntax errors have been detected. OK. 
you can click on each cell to reveal the content of the table. Now delete the group column and expand the custom column. Fantastic. We have our data. Now close and load to a pivot table. Place it right next to the existing one. Roll an index number to rows. Pay to values. Change the layout to tabular. You can collapse to show the aggregate values and expand for the details. And you see that we have the same result. In summary, Power Query has more steps compared to Excel and may be required when your file size is large and you know may require other transformations. So that's all for today. I hope you found the video useful. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Please subscribe if you haven't and don't forget to click the like button. Thank you.